Hello Guardians and welcome to Destiny Reset episode 183. This show is about anything and everything related to the Destiny franchise. If you love playing Destiny 2 as much as we do, you're in the right place. This reset we prepare for the arrival of Crimson Days, get excited for new Destiny literature on the way, and finally talk about the trials of achieving triumphs and balancing other games with Destiny. Hello Guardians and welcome. It's Arrow Knight and of course, Mr. Cyborg Sasquatch. Hello friend. Hello. How are you? I'm fantastic. Me too. It's a beautiful day. Night. It's been the best week ever. <laughs> yes. Am it's I awake enough weekend. for you? I, are you awake? I, uh, for now. Do you have your coffee? <laughs> yeah. We uh, did some jumping jacks. And uh, right. it's it's really the setting is no different than ever uh, before. It's it's almost midnight. We're just starting, and it's the night before this is gonna go live. We're, we've got another one of those about three hours from talking right now. You're gonna be listening to it, so it's it's a fresh episode, as we like to call them. The Hot news and fresh out fresh. the kitchen. <laughs> uh, with that, I mean, we might as well dive in, right? I Let's mean, do it. Any announcements yeah. this week? No, dude, we keep teasing a giveaway. Um, I mean, it's coming. We just, we, you know, we got that blue gear we want to give away. But uh, maybe in like, what, one more episode, we'll probably do it. We want to do it uh, at least, uh, what, second week of February? Valentine's Day giveaway maybe next week. How about Post this? Valentine's. If you really would like to win something for free, just start tweeting us until we relent. Trolling us the for giveaways. Stuff. <laughs> Squeaky wheel gets the grease. Uh, too funny. We we will have giveaway soon, guys. Uh, we always like to give things away. Apparently, our community does too because you guys send us stuff left and right to give back. So Very that's cool. right. We've got some stuff soon. In the meantime, how about some news? Yes. How about it? Yes. Uh, this week at Bungie, we prepare for Crimson Days. Crimson Days returns February twelfth through February nineteenth. Lord Shax will be officiating the chaos again this year, watching as you and a partner take on the competition. Bounties will also offer a few objectives outside the Crucible, so be prepared for a delicious bouquet of activities from which to choose. Mm. We've got some graphics of some cool uh, bows that seem yes. to be featured. A new bow. Rewards new from bow. last year's event will be returning with the added fire of the Vow. A new solar bow for players to earn during this event. All players of Destiny 2 are invited to join in on the festivities. There's also going to be a mm -hmm. Bungie bounty. Cosmo and Dimji will dive into Crimson Days on PlayStation 4, Thursday, February 14th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Pacific time. You can watch at twitch.tv slash Bungie. Find them, beat them, and claim a sign of mutual combat emblem. Until then... They've got some more news to cover. So they did like a a whole blog post at Crimson Days as well, which I always kind of forget. Oh yeah, they true that. Do that. Uh, do that with some of these events. I guess it kind of seems like they do it with most of the live events. Um, we have that image of shacks with bounties and what appears That's right. to be a weekly bounty and some loot, which we learned. What was it last? Twab or the Twab before maybe that uh, we were going to be able to get all the old loot, right? With, yeah, uh, there's a couple of things that I missed last time. Specifically, the heart emote is the mm -hmm. one I'm after. I, yep, I need that one as well. Um, and but then you'll be able to earn anything that you missed last time with your. Uh, they'll have the crimson bounties that will award different stuff and then there'll also be the um the engrams i believe yes double up be able to get. engrams which is always nice on the live events you'll get your normal yep. one and your crimson days engram of course cyborg mentioned the bow already we got um i guess you mentioned the the wardcliff coil ornament um be interested to see what it looks like and then the sugary shell sugary ghost shell yeah the sugary shell will be earned uh, I believe if you 
complete all of the Crimson Day triumphs, which if you don't know what this looks like, it's a solid chocolate ghost. (laughs) I'm surprised they didn't put like the eye in the middle. It's it's all it's straight up all chocolate. I want even there. I want like ghost particle effects that have like radiant hearts when it's (laughs) sitting there. There That'd be cool. Yeah. Uh, But worth mentioning the the main event here is crimson doubles which is a 2v2 crucible playlist uh clash with a round based twist stay in close proximity to your partner and your abilities will recharge at a faster rate stray too far and your enemies will be given a waypoint leading to your location there will be matchmaking and there will also be valor bonuses for both crimson doubles and all crucible modes yeah. um there's also going to be a nightfall a duo nightfall bounty that's a weekly bounty it was funny because i was doing a triumph this week for a nightfall solo and i invited a friend to join me and then we finished the nightfall and it unlocked a triumph that i didn't know existed and i went and tried to find it and it's locked because it's not available but i still unlocked it <laughs> <laughs> yeah like i did hear about that yeah Hoping it doesn't Crimson Triumph. Did you, yeah. have you ever seen other people get that? I I heard that. I want to say it was maybe just on my Twitter feed. Something. Uh, maybe it was in uh, a video I watched. Uh, some I'm creators sure I follow. But I, the hope is obviously that you don't run into any issues when Crimson Days actually launches. Yeah. I Hopefully hope it, it just unlocks. Actually unlocks. Yeah. It didn't break. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, the the way you'll receive rewards this year for completing activities are a little different. Um, Shacks will give out confectionery hearts for completing Crimson Doubles matches and turning in Crimson Bounties. You will use those to purchase the rewards. So we have all the same rewards from last year as well as two new rewards for you to earn. Um, yes. So they mentioned similar to Horror Story in the Festival of the Lost, a max power weapon will be available during Crimson Days, which is the Val that you'll be able to buy four confectionery hearts. It comes fully masterworked and is the first bow available to all players of Destiny 2, so you don't have to have Forsaken, and it will drop at 650 for Forsaken players. Now, they show a little clip. Tell me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that they're getting a one-hit kill with a headshot with this bow. I know. I saw that it looked pretty potent. Do it twice. I, it seems crazy. Yeah, I, I don't wanna know. know what the perk set is on this i wonder if it's related to like draw time or i'm not sure like, yeah how but just could be pretty nasty so you might want to pick this one up this might I be love, right up your alley the dude. bows i couldn't believe that it's uh um, like you said it's they're doing a thing similar to festival where we get the currency if you will and, and buy it it's it's only a hundred um a hundred of those which is i mean the ornaments and the emotes cost more so i thought that was interesting right. it wasn't like a um, horror story where it cost the most horror story was like that right it, you you kind of had to mm. work for a few yeah two, it, yeah it weeks was for it. it was expensive I, yeah i guess it's only a maybe week, this though, is some right? feedback this is you know like seven days yeah maybe make it a little more accessible and make you know they seem to like making the cosmetic stuff the the hardest to get yeah the hunt like here's yeah. your consolation prize for <laughs> busting your butt for a week uh while you're playing crimson doubles you'll earn seven confectionery hearts with every win and five for every loss daily bounties net you 15 hearts the weekly nightfall nightfall duo bounty gives you 75 um here are the confectionery heart costs for each reward so we've got the tirastrella tirastrella Legendary Ghost Shell 25, Undeterred Exotic Sparrow 50, the bow is 100, Wordcliffe Coil Ornaments 125, Flaunting Dance Legendary Emote 150, Warm Hearted Gift Package 15. Those will give you a chance to receive enhancement cores, weapons, mods, gear, and resources. Great mm-hmm. place to dump extra confectionery hearts if you get them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm finally starting to build my cores. Now that I've hit max for a few resets, it's kind of nice, but, uh, that's good. Anyways, man. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, you know, we, we talked about a couple weeks ago when we got some info on it, it 
sounded as though it wasn't going to be anything too different than what we've seen in the past. And I mean, that looks to be the case other than a few few new things. But, uh, you know, that's OK. It's the classic. It'll complement the game we're already playing. But, uh, you know, I don't know. I guess they they did sprinkle in a little PVE element with the nightfall. So that's nice. But I don't know. I'm hoping it doesn't feel too. I hope it doesn't feel stale. You know, I hope it's fun. I always love doubles. I love doubles. I love the mechanic in Crimson Doubles. It's fun. So, you know, it'll be a nice thing to do alongside whatever else we're doing that week. Yeah, and it's only going to be a week. Right. So it won't have much time to go stale, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Right. I don't know if that's good or bad. It won't give you much time if you want to do all the things you're gonna have to play it a lot it seems but yeah spend your week doing it we'll see how it goes we'll see how it goes last couple things they they added uh there's a new emote which is called the tiny bow it's shooting a tiny bow (laughs) yeah i I wish uh, yeah i wish that your guardian was like putting a little more force into the arrow but i think that's kind of the point it's like pew (laughs) yeah and then finally uh the bungee rewards program will have a cool The Val hoodie. It's like a nice, I don't know what to call this. It's like a reddish pink color zip-up hoodie with some crimson insignia on the back and a tricorn on the front. They also mention if you purchase it, it comes with a bungee foundation pin, and the bungee store will donate $7 for each pin directly to the bungee foundation's granting of technology wishes for Make-A-Wish in honor of you. So you will only have through February 19th at 9 a.m. Pacific to redeem this. So it will be a limited time. So make sure um, if you want that hoodie, you grab that. That'll be um, that 19th is the following Tuesday after the event. Well, basically as nice. the event is ending. Yeah. It's a nice looking hoodie. I'm, I was kind of like, I don't know. And then I saw it was zip up, which I like. It's basically like yeah. a jacket. And, yeah, I was going to uh, say it, it looks like a long sleeve t-shirt with a hoodie versus like a full blown yeah. thick hoodie that you would think of. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's like a thinner like lightweight looking uh hoodie. So I think I could possibly buy this. We'll see. I don't know how much it's going to be. My guess is going to be like <laughs> 50 bucks. We'll see. Well, it's the shipping, man. It's always the shipping. But it's that's okay. The shipping. I mean, I, I was looking behind the I, scenes. But be, between that and then the last word replica and the yeah. um, title badges, pins that I want to buy, like, I'm going to have to kind of spread this out a little bit. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I have a yep. bunch yep. of things I have to buy. And my concern is that they're going to make me purchase each of them individually with separate shipping. And it is going to really mm. add up. Yes. That's the scary part. It's always the shipping. It's scary. Bungie store and your shipping. We were so spoiled by our uh, Amazon Prime free two day shipping. Once you get that, it's like, mm, man. <laughs> well, next up in the news, we talk about Titan skating. Bless Long story Christ. short, in the PC universe, you can't of do that anymore. Two, <laughs> you can't do it. Well, you'll still be able to. Yes use the ability but they are um in their words we're fixing an issue with the titan lift ability that currently allows players with the use of unconventional inputs i.e key binding to mouse scroll wheel macros etc to reach extremely excessive movement speeds it will still be possible to maximize your lift speed by skillfully timing your lift activation inputs to boost your overall momentum in other words, Titan skating is still possible, just less excessive. Yes. Um, I mean, basically, it sounds like... I mean, if you guys, if, if you've ever seen what they can do on PC, they it's not what was intended. It's crazy. It's it's really cool. Obscenely but fast. It, it's yeah, it like beyond... Cool, it's beyond it, Titan skating and Destiny 1. Like, the, what's nice about what they're saying, like you said, is it's, it's like we're not taking out the well-timed... You've gotten really good at being a Titan skating type of thing with your lift. They're just taking out like the broken, you can almost fly across the map in seconds. <laughs> and they mentioned the reason for this is because when it comes to um, aiming, positioning, and even networking, 
it it just essentially breaks parts of the sandbox. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, while that's unfortunate for PC players that enjoy this, I think it needed to happen. There's they'll still be able to Titanscape beyond what you can do on console, um, just because of what you can do with a keyboard, but it's not going to be as excessive. Right. So yeah, it's like uh, let's see the, how this uh, goes. I think this is, is going to uh, be in the 2.2.0 patch in March. Yes. What's the super, um, the flaming uh, swords on the warlock? Dawnblade? Is it just, uh, is it top tree and bottom tree is just normal Dawnblade, right? And then we've oh. got attunement in the middle now, right? No, well, they're all three have their own attunements. I don't remember what the bottom and top are. Oh, that's now. right. They are attunement of something. Well, what yeah. I'm getting at is if you've ever seen, is that just on PC as well? Like the speed at which a no, warlock can, can move? you can do that on console on as well. Console as well. That's With, so fast. That it looks like they Titan's made that, um Sandbox adjustment. I don't remember when this was. This was the Go Fast update. Mm-hmm. And yeah, when you have the super popped and you can cruise. You jump, you like <laughs> launch across. It's really crazy. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. basically what Titans look like, just normal. No, it's faster <laughs> than that. It is. You're right. Yeah. It is. I won't I won't take that it's an exaggeration. <laughs> just uh, go watch, go look at videos of um Whisper of the Worm speed runs mm-hmm. and you'll see. Yeah, it is faster. It'll be uh, interesting to see some PC players after they adjust those Titans, but it makes I mean, sense. They'll, they'll adjust quickly and it'll be fine. They're just not going to be able to go quite as fast as they used to. What will affect the most is people that speed run nightfalls and missions and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, next up, we get an update on some reading material. Mm. Uh, two so cool. new volumes promised to release we get destiny comic collection volume one and the destiny grimoire anthology volume two coming soon so exciting dude was not expecting this yet yeah very cool we get um in the comic collection they promise a 144 page volume that includes their comic collection plus never before seen stories behind the scene galleries and exclusive content from featured artists now on the cover, they show some of the art from the previously announced mm-hmm. Cades 6 comic that I I literally had forgotten about until like a week ago when a non-pig tweeted something like, hey, when is this coming out? And I was, holy crap, that they, they announced that like months ago and never released. Mm-hmm. And... Then they've announced this, and in a, another tweet he responded to when they tweeted about this, he said, what about that comic series? And the Bungie account uh, did confirm that it will be released in this comic collection. Um, no word yet if that's exclusive to the book or if they'll release it digitally later, but we won't see it until this releases. Yeah. Um, it's available in the Bungie store not available yet for pre-order. However, you can click the email me when available and get a notification when it will be available. Same thing for the Grimoire Anthology Volume 2. That is promised this fall. Um, I don't know if they dated... Oh, the, yeah, this summer is the comic collection. So, summer for the comic collection, fall for Anthology Volume 2. It's so cool to see this stuff, man. I love, uh, obviously, there's a plan going on behind the scenes, as we knew with the Grimoire for sure, but it's cool to get a surprise of the comic collection. I love seeing volume one on it. Like, we're just going to get more and more of this stuff. I think the, uh, yeah. I've got the anthology volume one on my shelf here. And looking at volume two, it's like, these things are going to look like a set of encyclopedias on my shelf. I think that's the idea. <laughs> it's a different color. Um, same uh, imagery on the front. Mm-hmm. With the volume two on it. I'm I'm just happy that we're seeing it so soon. I wasn't sure how often they would be releasing these because the last one, I mean, it, it just came out. Mm-hmm. Although we were waiting for it for a while. I'm happy to see that we'll see it um, this soon. I mean, realistically, it is like a year apart, but yeah. at least we know that they're pushing forth with publishing these. Makes me wonder what else 
we might see over. Can I just get a book? Many months. Yes. Where's the book? Just wonder. Everything seems to be rolling, man. I I'm excited to see what else surfaces here over the next year or so. Yeah. Next up in Destiny Player support, um, they talked about there was a hot fix that we got this this past reset, uh, which some with some patch notes that blocked players from receiving certain weapon frames from A to one, which were the sniper rifle or bow frames as part of those quests. Um, they then talk about again, updating iron banner bounties. And that's always a mouthful to say <laughs> every, every time it's been they're years. Str- <laughs> they're still, stressing. We still can do it. That completed iron banner bounties retained from Season of the Forge will be removed entirely from player inventories once Season of the Drifter begins to avoid losing any potential rewards, redeem those before Season of the Forge ends. Uh, Then they mentioned some other issues, particularly with uh, key molds not working with 801, fixes coming in March. Um... Crimson Days, of course, coming Tuesday, February 12th. To com- to participate, you need to have completed the Red War campaign and achieve level 20. Um, lastly, there's some known issues before Crimson Days goes live. Go check those out. Um, be sure to claim your triumphs before Crimson Days ends, uh, because if you do not claim them when the event ends, they will be locked in your SOL stuff Mm. out of luck. Yes. Finally, we get our movies of the week. One of these is a mega movie. They got a lot of traction on social media and everywhere else this week. Oh yeah. Bife put up the last word and thorn, the complete story. It's an hour and a half epic with artwork, multiple voice voice actors. Many of them are content creators, you know, and love from around the community. Go check this out if you're interested. It's crazy good, dude. Like apparently we got enough of what he was waiting on in this in the last word quest that he could finish. He felt like he could finish this story that he wanted to tell um, between uh, these two iconic weapons. At least that's what I picked up on. But yeah, dude, this is he certainly had to be working on unreal. this for a while. Yeah, dude, like it's unbelievable. Definitely go check it out, guys. It's it's so good. It's so well made. I mean, like you said, it, it got all kinds of traction. Even uh we know our buddy Paul Tassie covers Destiny over on um over on uh, for Forbes and they even tweeted it out on their main account and stuff, dude. Like major traction. So Yeah. It's very cool. Next up they had a runner up. You should definitely go check out um where six players defeat Argos. With swords. <laughs> Something I did not believe was possible. Very cool. Uh, and then they add another um, cool feature this week. A community artist alley with some very cool, three very cool pieces of art from community artists. So you should go check these out. I definitely. Yeah, like I wondered news. if this, you think this is just this week? Um, the way they phrase it, know. it sounded like this is just a one-time thing. But I, it would be really cool to see this each week in the twelve. Yeah, I'd like that as well. That'd be a good idea. Yeah. Well, that is the news this week. Um, Not a whole lot. We don't have any other patches or hot fixes to talk about. We talked about Crimson Days. Um, Only other thing worth mentioning I noticed was, uh, I believe, Dimji or Cosmo, one of these guys, uh, tweeted that they are getting close to fixing that nasty guitar error. Oh, pops yeah. up at the end of uh, the last wish, and hope to have a fix in for March's planned patch. That'd be awesome. Yes, please, Our guardians, be happy about that. Yep, that's the news, Arrow. That's the news. Not a whole lot this week. It's kind of crazy when we get through the news that fast. It's still exciting though. We got a live event coming up, but um, I guess you know, Cyborg. I can take the honors again of. Asking you how your reset, how was your reset? Simon? How was my reset? Bum, bum, bum. It's been busy. Destiny? We've been, uh, man, we've been really focused the past couple weeks on trying to get Petra's rundown. Oh, yeah. And we work on it maybe like two, two 
nights a week. Yeah, you you kind of mentioned that to us. Was it last week? I can't remember. You guys are yeah putting we, in we the work. Put our first attempts in last week, like our first actual attempts after practicing, and um, we just keep running into weird stuff. Man, this is it's a long raid in terms of try. There's a lot. There's there's a lot of encounters. There's a lot of opportunities for things to go wrong. There's silly things that happen, you know, like somebody dies because of something like just completely like just dumb, you know, yeah, like they random their foot was on the plate for Callie on the <laughs> thing and they didn't realize it, you know, and those aren't too big of a deal. Like early in the raid, not a big deal because we've gotten so good at some of these encounters it's it's not a big deal if somebody dies in the first like half but once we get past once we get to morgeth it's like all right everybody put their game face on you know like okay, <laughs> because once once we get to morgeth we're basically home free every major thing that could go wrong besides one thing has been conquered like the the puzzle plates for sure chi is a tricky thing that can just totally blow up unexpectedly um there's other things that can go wrong in shirochi like people get knocked off on accident by shirochi off place and die like that's never happened but it's a risk somebody dying on one of the two jumping sections is a big st stressful place like we've had a couple instances there and it wasn't it's funny because the most stressful part of the raid is going through one of the jumping sections for everybody Mm -hmm. In both every time that we've wiped there, it was not because they like missed a jump or they just did it wrong. It was literally like, I don't know why I died. Like I jumped and nothing happened. Like it was stuff <laughs> like, I don't know. You ever have those moments in destiny where you like, maybe you, you hit your button wrong or, Oh Yeah. Like Dude, you that PvP, man, you just fly off the map and miss, just kind of miscalculate. just weird <laughs> stuff. It that's that's what's happened. The funniest thing was one of our members, and we have a clip of it, but I'm not gonna like, I'm not gonna call him out. I'm not, if you know, like, I don't know if you could go find this. If you wanted, but I think it's really funny. We've been laughing about it for like all week. They jumped, and instead of you know, gliding or going where they had to go. They just jumped off and just dropped like a brick and just watched <laughs> it happen. Like they did it. It's still funny. Just thinking about it. They were like, what happened? And we, we <laughs> somebody clipped it so funny. because they were streaming and they just literally like jump off and just fall straight down. I just can't, I can't get over how dumb it was. And we Sometimes, still don't man, know like, why they did that. I think it was just a moment of, you know, yeah. I, well, I've done it in PvP, man. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, like you just have a brain lapse, and you your brain forgets the like the flow and mechanics. And, and we're and doing jumping. this stuff <laughs> like you know we're getting on at night, and we've been trying, really trying to get on as early as we can because we recognize that after after a certain point for people, you get too tired, and you're not just mentally, you're not as strong, you're not as focused. And some of our players are in East Coast, Central, um, and in Pacific. So it's a four hour span that mm -hmm. we've, we're trying to figure out to get everybody on and get people on before it's too late. Some of our players like get up mega early. And by the time we're in, they're like been awake 20 plus hours. It's like, you know, what do you do? So oh, we're just yeah. trying to make it work, but. So stupid stuff's happening, preventable stuff has happened, but it's gotten more, less frequent. And and then this week, it's been networking issues, like perfect runs ruined by networking issues. We were oh, we no. finally made it the furthest we've made it. We made it to the walk, which is the last encounter. The walk is a like not everybody loves that encounter. It's a little frantic, but it's easy. It's, it can be easily done if everybody's focused and communicates. So we got to the walk and I'm like, we're home free. This is it. I'm like, I can't believe it. We're going to get Petra's run tonight. I was like, this is what's going on in my head. 
but I didn't say anything because I didn't want to jinx it, you know? Mm -hmm. So the player picks up the orb and starts running. And then we didn't even make it out of her mouth and somebody died. And I'm like, how, how did somebody die? There's no enemies. (laughs) And what happened was, and I actually, we actually ran into this bug later on that night, just doing some practice if there's like a net, it's either a networking issue or it's just a bug in the encounter. But sometimes even when you're within the orb holders aura, it will not cleanse you. And that happened right out of the gate. Like somebody picked it up and ran and they were just not getting a cleanse at all and died. And we're like, mm-hmm. wow, <laughs> what the heck, man, no way. Like, oh, it was so, and we, this was like our fifth run that night, you know, so it was late and it was our last shot. I think, no, no, this was maybe like our third. We, we took a couple more after that, but it's just disappointing, man. It's, it's, oh, it, is yeah. a, it is a that test stinks. of perseverance and will like and to keep going and like <laughs> to be good. patient and not get frustrated at yourself is the hardest thing if you screw it up. Cause I've had a couple instances for sure where I wiped and it was my fault and it was something stupid, you know, we'd have had instances where players got killed by things they could not have prevented. Like, you know, that weird thing that, um, the, uh, cabal and the taking cabal centurions will do where they'll hit you with a shield Mm -hmm. and it'll hit you against a environment thing and insta kill you. Yep. We had that happen, you know, like there's like nothing you can do if you don't know they're there. Like, there's like pop, you're dead. Like, come on. Like there shouldn't be instant fail states, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're hanging in there. Like I know that we can do it. We have this raid so tuned up, man. Like everyone has their roles and their gear, their loadout. Like there's nothing that we can change or do significantly differently we just need the run we just need it to happen you know like the circumstances the network the focus like everything just has to come together in this perfect symphony of success (laughs) (laughs) and uh, we just got to keep showing up until it happens you get and, it. And hope that the guitar error doesn't screw up the walk for us. Yeah. That's the other thing. Oh, yeah. Sometimes when we play, we'll get it. And sometimes I've, I've had it. I've only had it actually happen to me like three times. But what if on that run it happens, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, yeah. How much is that going to hurt? So we'll see. I don't know. That's That's been like a lot of our. I mean that's that's been a lot of focus lately the past couple of weeks for for me and a lot well, of that's a good time for that too. I mean it's, guys it's a little with, bit yeah. of a downtime if you will. Yeah. yeah, it's perfect. The um I know I've been talking a while but the other thing I have to mention and I promised I would bring up on this show because I failed to bring it up the last like 2 weeks is that I finally got dredging. Oh, I don't know how nice. I forgot the past 2 weeks to bring it up, but I was told by my fire team member that I had to bring it up because I have to confess that my last, so I needed one kill to make this happen. I, I finally got the meatball. I think this was not this past full curse week, but the previous one. So this is probably like four weeks ago Mm -hmm. to drop the ship that I needed. Oh, nice. Which was great, but I still needed one invader kill have to kill an invader while they're in their super. I don't know why this is so hard to do, but no <laughs> one will use their super while invading. Yeah, they, we used just, to all the time before. and that's It's not just anymore. too easy to use a variety of heavy weapons, you mm-hmm. know, or just a sniper. Um, so no one would use them, but I would occasionally run into people and, and <laughs> I just couldn't get it. They would... I would hear them and they would be in a roaming super. I'm like, yes, this is perfect. Like this is my opportunity. And I would get shots on them or they wouldn't show up until, you know, where I could see them until they were right about to end the super. It like, I just could not get it. Um, and I was pretty, I'm pretty much just given up. 
I was, I just couldn't do it anymore. And one of my buddies were like, we have to get this for you. Like, come on, let's go play some Gambit. At this point I was like, I don't even, I don't even care anymore. I don't even want to play <laughs> Gambit because I can't get this. It's never going to happen. But he would just drag me in. And so we're playing and, and, you know, I'm just commiserating and being like complaining and like, it's never going to happen. He <clears throat> messages the other team. He's like, listen, my friend needs one kill. And they message him back and they're like, we're doing this too. We need like three. And we're like, all right, let's, let's get boosted. <laughs> so we jump in a party together and uh, basically like boosted each other's last invader kills. Very nice. Like, they join and they're like, okay, come over here. I'm going to be on the uh, garden side and, and I'm going to pop my super. And so I went and did it, got mine. And then me and him invaded over two rounds and gave them three kills they needed. And that's, that's how crazy. I finished dredging. Hey, working together. You know, we need to. It's that like one thirtieth percent of what I needed was boosted. I can live with it. I did uh, every other right. part of this completely legit. <laughs> I got the title. It Whatever. works. You're dredging. <laughs> the dredging title. So I'm I'm in the three title club now. Very nice. Working Very on that nice. fourth. That's cool stuff, know. man. I don't know Very if cool. blacksmith, I don't know. Oh, dude. I've looked Blacksmith at that one. requires a flawless run of um, mm -hmm. Scourge of the Past. And I don't know, man. I mean, I I have not raided in quite some time. I, I always loved raiding, dude. I just, just with the way I play the game right now, like I, I don't raid a lot. So when I see, go in and look at those and I see the raid requirements, I'm like, hmm, yep, all right. For now, let's go look at a different one. <laughs> yeah, they, they totally take a lot of dedication Unless yep. you're just at a whole nother level, you know. What's well, the you know when you're raiding, it's it's all about that time factor, right? Like what you guys are doing with your fire team. Like yeah. one, it's it's um you know playing for decent chunks of time, and then it's like you don't even though everybody always understands, but you know that possibility of having to like back out or hop off for a reason or something, you know anything. It's like man, it's just you know even crucible is that way sometimes. You know when we'll dive in. Well, not not so much general crucible. It was trials was kind of that way, right? Yeah. Um, so if you don't have like a big chunk of time that you play, you know, any given time of the week, um, it's hard to fit in some of those activities sometimes. That would be why I play a lot of solo crucible these days. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. And but I, even, I do miss um, raiding, man. Raiding Bane, is, fun, like, yeah. is tough because the Petra's run thing is, there's a little luck involved, but it just takes some dedication, but the mm -hmm. RNG aspects of it. Oh yeah. Um, I keep running getting three keys a week. I can't get one K voices. Is that the fourth that you're going for is Riven's Bay? Yeah. Um, yeah. and then I also need the Sparrow. Can't get the Sparrow to drop. A lot of my fire team members need similar items, you know, one or two things mm -hmm. that just won't drop for them. Um, so even if we get Petra's run, I don't know when I'll get Riven's Bay. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm steadily just, getting those keys every week and hoping did you cross say my fingers you haven't gotten 1k voices yet right no yeah that's, that's right that's what i'm I, chasing I felt like and, maybe uh, you yeah you yeah i felt like maybe you had told us you did at a certain point but no um no you haven't yet yeah and you're you're still I, steadily the funniest running it, like, like you said. the most ironic thing is one of our buddies that do have it the last two times that we've turned in keys one raid two other people got it in my fire team Mm. And then the last time I turned, I turned in the other night, I had a bunch of keys I hadn't turned in yet. I did five and two other people got it. Thank like, you. That thing always reminds, hard. anytime we talk about it, I probably say it, but it just reminds me of Vex Mythicast so much, dude, because oh, yeah. even, Absolutely. even you talking about it, like I remember when I got mine in vault, um, my buddy got hit, my buddy and my cousin got theirs at the same time. And I didn't get mine after who knows how many vault runs and eighty nine kills. It wouldn't be as frustrating for me if it wasn't related to a triumph. It, oh, if it was yeah. just a yeah. white whale, I mm -hmm. I could live with it, and I would still grind for it. 
but the fact that it's going to hold me back from a triumph is what's frustrating. Yeah, that stinks. Yeah, because even if I remember, it's so funny how you remember this stuff. I think we ran it again, that reset, or maybe it was the first run on the next reset, but I did finally get mine. But yeah, dude, I mean, that was back in the day. There weren't any triumphs tied to it or anything, you know, like it wasn't going for a title um, or something of that nature. So yeah, it's it's uh, a little bit more painful these days <laughs> other than just wanting the weapon. It's like, I always remember Fatebringer. I've mentioned it many times on the show. I, I mean, it took forever before I got Fatebringer. Uh, but man, when you get it, it's just, it's so sweet. Um, but yeah, that's got to hurt a little bit trying to get that, that title, that triumph, you know, yeah. destiny things. Them destiny things. Um, besides that, I I did um, play the Division Two beta this week. Oh, nice, very nice. A uh, couple couple play sessions. I played some of the beginning content, um, a good chunk of it. You get like two missions and some side missions. I did a good majority of that with a buddy on Xbox. And then um, over the weekend, they opened up what they called like an end game type activity where you got to play with a um, more specked out and geared out character um, and do something called an invasion, which is some bad guys coming into an area that you had already controlled, I guess. So we played that. Um, it was, it was fun. You know, I didn't play division one because when I played the division one beta, I didn't like the movement or the combat. I remember that, talking about that way. Yeah, that had to like, that had to work. I, I I was so interested in the division because it was multiplayer and I liked the, uh, the concept and the aesthetic, the setting, the fiction and stuff was really appealing to me, but the core gameplay stuff wasn't fun. And so like, nah, I'm good. I've got destiny. Um, but it seems that some of those things that I didn't like are improved now. And, uh, I did enjoy like the core gameplay aspects of it. Um, I had a lot of technical issues. Um, I've heard that these were more prevalent on console, but we'll see how the full release comes out. It's it's something I might like to uh, just have as a game to like dip my toes in, like play once a week or something. Yeah. I, I couldn't yeah, no, commit see, the time um, I play in Destiny to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, you know, but. it's always about at least, you know, for me and I think for both of us, like finding that balance of what we can play alongside Destiny. And that's kind of been what I've been toying with the last couple months. And uh, I, I'm going to wait on Anthem, um, see how it goes. But I, I haven't decided yet because I really did enjoy the first division and I played it um, at launch and then I played it again. Uh, I bought the season pass and played it again somewhere in there. But, you know, I think it was Destiny. Uh, you know, I kept playing Destiny, of course, and it, it's hard to balance two investment games like that, but I think you definitely can those two games. I don't know how much other gaming you'll fit in, depending on how much time you have, but The Division is exactly the kind of game that I like, dude. Like it, um, it looks exactly like, I mean, it's third person, modern, modern-esque shooter, which is what SOCOM was, dude. And then you throw like the RPG and investment game loot elements into that, and it's exactly what I want to play uh you know but it's uh destiny is is always uh the game that i want to play it around you know so it's it's one of those things it's like okay can yeah. you balance i think you can like you said jump in once or twice a week it's just it's all about it's not necessarily even it's, it's the same with destiny the the time you play it's keeping up with what's going on in the game outside of your play time you know so that when you play yeah. you know what's going on <laughs> yeah uh, and the vision definitely has those min max elements right like it's yeah. uh, definitely a build heavy game and you don't have to know that stuff but it you know it's always just fun to stay in tune with that kind of stuff so yeah so i think i'm going to i think i'm going to make it um like a PC game that I can yeah. play with friends on PC that I don't get to play with. Very and that's cool. kind of my goal there is like have a fun game I can play together with other friends that don't play on Xbox or don't play Destiny or whatever and uh, have something I can go and jump in and play like cooperatively with those yeah. people. So I'd definitely do it. So that's the goal. I think it comes out in March. Is that yeah, right? I think it's March, yeah. mid-March. So, 
Yeah. I, I think, know. uh, I don't know if Anthem I'll be able to just... play it while Checkers Wild comes out, but we'll see. Oh, right. I know that's the thing. It's going to launch it's right the around there. card. And we don't yeah. know when and it, like when that's coming out. We haven't heard anything about it yet. So, mm-hmm. yeah, we assume like the week, first or second week of March, probably the second week. Usually we have that like in between week now, but we don't know for sure. Um, and Anthem, I think it launches like the actual launch date is a little bit further here, maybe another week or two here in March. And then, but I think if you have like the pass or whatever, you can, you yeah, there's this week, play possibly earlier. if not already or pl- you can play it. Yeah. So That's it'll be interesting. Thing. Yeah. I want to see like what people think about that. I've been following and watching some stuff on it, but uh, yeah, there's just as usual, man, it's not even, it's the way it is nowadays, man. It doesn't even have to be release season. You know, the fall, we still get amazing games year round now. So it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Great to be a gamer. Well, tell so. me about your reset. What have you been up to? Yeah, dude. I mean, uh, last week, by the way, I finished the episode, you and Jump Smith. Uh, it was awesome to hear you guys talk about last word. I appreciate you uh, throwing in my little tidbit because I, I was hoping to talk about last word this week, man. I, I, that gun, dude, it's so good. It's so fun. Um, I've been playing so much more Crucible just since that gun dropped. And I, I always love the Crucible, man, but it's like, I, how do I say it? Like, I didn't realize how much I missed that weapon. And, and then on top of that, I, I had this like kind of nervous, okay, when I get it, what's it going to feel like am i gonna be able to use it just like i did and it's like i didn't miss a day of not having that gun dude like i instantly it's like it came right back to me because no land beyond and the last word were always my it definitely in my top five i mean they were probably my top two weapons in uh d1 and that thing dude it feels so good i know there's still rumblings of and Bungie even acknowledged last week, I think, of like player feedback that the gun feels a little different on console than it does on PC. People are saying that when you're ADS, it kicks way more than it used to. And, and I do see it definitely a little bit, the kick in the ADS, but I've posted so many clips on my Twitter feed just having so much fun with this gun. And I noticed after I saw people providing that feedback... I'm hardly ADSing with it at all. Like, it's crazy. I'm surprising myself with some of the ranged kills I'm getting with it just um, from the hip, firing from the hip. But, I mean, we've had, I think True Vanguard and some others have released some console um, clips of it or videos. And I think you just have to pace the gun a little bit differently, ADS now. You definitely can still control the recoil. It is a bit heavier than in D1. But overall, dude, that gun feels... It just feels like it did back in the day. I mean, we had a lot of different versions of The Last Word in Destiny 1, but it feels like what I remember The Last Word feeling like, and I just jumped in and started using it, dude. Like, it it felt amazing. I, I heard you talk about it last week a bit. You used it some in The Crucible, didn't you? Um, yeah. A little bit? Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know, dude. It, I know there's a lot of different opinions on it, but for me, it feels amazing. Like, it just it came back. <laughs> I don't know. I love that gun, though, and it's unreal. It was so crazy to see what one weapon could do for Destiny and the Crucible. Like, all the videos that were popping up, all the excitement all over the place, people instantly were going back to that. I mean, I'm running Last Word Sniper, dude, my Aachen, um, Energy Aachen, and it feels so good, dude. It feels like old-school Destiny 1, and it's one weapon. It makes you think, like, iconic weapons like that gun need to always be in every iteration of destiny like from launches right that's what it feels like it's like we should always have the last word as an option (laughs) yeah not that not that that will be the case but and as we know too apparently we're getting thorn back i was not i used thorn but it seems like you're one or the other right i mean you obviously could use both but i always was last word heavy kind of guardian in the crucible so it'll be interesting to see if and when we get Thorn back next season, what that's going to do. Because it is definitely like the last word counter, right? It's the ranged. We'll see if the damage over time comes back. So um, we'll see. I don't know. Yeah. That's my two cents on the last word. If you want, I think Jump said it last week. If you want to go pull my Twitter profile up, uh, it may be down just a little ways now. But dude, it was just clip after clip after clip of the last word. 
Uh, but this reset, man, that was almost all last reset. I haven't played a ton of anything this reset. I have fit in some Spider-Man. I think I've played like one Crucible match. I've kind of just um, not hopped on a whole lot this reset, just some stuff going on. But uh, I will say I fit in some Spider-Man. I think I'm like 75% through the story. It's kind of crazy because I thought the game was ending. Uh, I thought I was right there. It was about to be the last cutscene, And then it just opens up into this just whole nother act at the end of the game where you're fighting. I won't spoil like any crazy details, but you don't realize you haven't fought a lot of villains in the game, like actual villains you would think of from the comic books and stuff until you get to this point in the game. And then all of a sudden, boom, like, okay, here they all are. And you're fighting them each one by one. So it's really cool. Nice. Like I thought I was almost done and, and I'm not, but I'm still doing like all the collectibles and stuff like that too. So I'm having a blast with Spider-Man. It's been really nice to play like a, it's open world, but somewhat linear single player game with Destiny. Um, it's been kind of nice to balance the two, especially with this little bit of downtime we've had in Destiny. But I don't think we could go this episode without mentioning the crazy thing that happened this last reset. I say crazy, but it was just randomly unexpected. Uh, Respawn, the Titanfall team, or old school Call of Duty guys that split off and made Respawn, they released Apex Legends, which I'm sure at some point everybody listening right now has, has probably heard about it at this point. But dude, have you? did you play this at all? Uh, obviously, I'm sure you caught wind of it. I have it's not. It's been all over the place. I have did not you put, yet. You haven't played it at all? Dude, I, I downloaded it. I love Respawn first off. I mean, Titanfall, dude, when the first Titanfall came out, that game was so fun, dude. I have the actual like Titanfall controller that I bought when it came out, and it it was so fun. You did you play Titanfall? Did you play the first one? No, man. I just like I have a sealed up Titanfall two, literally like in plastic on a shelf. Oh, here. nice. So you never <laughs> played the first, but you did get no. two, and you didn't play two, right? Dude, two was I didn't play two a whole lot. Like, I actually wanted to at some point get to the campaign on two because people seem to really enjoy it. Um, I still hear about the campaign on that one where people just said it was fantastic, but Titanfall two, I played PVP some, it did get a little bit more chaotic in it, but it was still fun. And I think people had a good time with it, but Titanfall one, man, like I think it was just cause it was the initial IP release. Um, it was, we just had so much fun with that game. And so, you know, ever since then and, and before, I mean, respawn, that it's kind of like Bungie, dude. They know how to make shooters, right? And Apex Legends, this new BR that they made launches, and it's like, what is this, dude? Like they apparently it like almost started to leak a little bit over the weekend. What was this last weekend? And um, I think Jeff Keighley like tweeted something out because some leak started coming out, but. What's even more intriguing is a marketing strategy with it, right? Like nothing about it. Apparently a bunch of streamers and content creators went out and they let them play it. And then boom, Monday, I think it was Monday, February 4th, I believe. The game launches on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. And all the streamers are playing it, Lupo and everybody. Obviously uh, a different kind of marketing strategy, which I think in the end might have been very effective. I've watched the Play Apex, their Twitter uh, account. It went from like the first day I looked at it, dude, I don't remember. It's 10 to 30,000 followers. And now they have like 415,000 followers, like in a matter of seven days or six days. It's crazy. But part of that's coming because I think people are just genuinely having a good time. But it's really cool, dude, because. I downloaded it. I like BRs, but I haven't played any of them a ton. I played PUBG, played Fortnite, and of course got Black Ops to play Blackout. And I played it, man, and I did enjoy it, but it just wasn't pulling me back in consistently. But this game, dude, I don't want to spend too much time on it, but it's cool, man. It's like Overwatch heroes, but they call them legends. Really cool. You got like your base set of legends and then it's a BR game, but the Titanfall, you can't wall run and there's no Titans, but there's like sliding and stuff like that. So it feels like Titanfall again, respawn. They know how to make a first person shooter. It feels tight. It feels good. And I don't know what it is, dude, but it's fun. I, I've i said, I think several times on this show, like one type of game that balances really well with Destiny is a battle royale game because it's it's not really... 
I mean, you can, as much time as you want to put into them, you can as far as knowledge and playing, but you can get in, especially this game, it's it's pretty quick um, how you, you know, how fast you get through a match. But you go in 10, 15 minutes, play a match, maybe, maybe that long, and then you're done, right? And you can go play Destiny if you want, or you can play something the next night, whatever. So it's, it's kind of easy to balance with Destiny. And something about this game, dude, I, we'll see. I, it didn't feel like newness was the fun factor for me the first couple of days I played it. But a couple of my buddies have picked it up now. My cousins picked it up and they're all saying the same thing, dude. They're like, wow, this game is fun, dude. And I think it's, I think it's the combination of all these other games, right? It's the combination of Overwatch and Titanfall and just, you know, a classic battle Royale game. And it's, it's cool to have these abilities on your legends. Like, uh, I've been playing, I guess you could call them the tank where I actually like can throw down bubble shields and stuff like that. And it, I don't know, dude. It's it's fun, man. I I have to report more as the weeks go on here. Uh, but I think I may I may keep playing it. I'm enjoying it. Do you have any plans to play it at all? I I might grab it. I mean, the fact that it's, it's free, free doesn't hurt, right? Right. It's, it's, it's not free. Hard yeah. To yeah. download and pick up, and I think that's what makes a game like this easy to launch mm-hmm. without. An announcement and not have right. to do it in a conventional marketing campaign um, and what can make it blow up so fast because it's accessible you know mm-hmm. anybody can pick it up and there's been a lot of attention on you know how many players have played you know how, how many concurrents you have those are all great metrics but and I'm not trying to downplay what they're doing and not say it's not a great game but yeah that's that's achievable with a free game, you know? Right, yeah. Um, can they make money with it? I hope so. Um, I think the most disappointing thing to come out of this is that this is what EA decided to do. Not EA. Is it EA? No. It's EA and Respawn. Yeah, EA. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Instead of Titanfall 3. Yeah, and that was instant said, reaction, this is, right? This is the game. Yep. And Vince and Pella, he did tweet out, though... And he said that there's still because people were saying they aren't working on Titanfall three anymore. And I think at some point, EA somewhere along the lines, like they said, like yes, they were developing this game. They decided to develop this game instead of Titanfall three. I can't pull up the exact tweet um, right on the spot here, but I did see a tweet from Vince Sempella, which he's the head of Respawn or one of the few heads at Respawn. He did say like Titanfall 3 is still like in the works, but I think like that might have been like a, I don't know for sure, but like a blanket statement to just say, hey, like it doesn't mean we're not making Titanfall 3. This is just what we're doing right now. So long story short, it probably did delay it, if anything, uh, or if nothing, I guess. Uh, But uh, I don't know, man. People seem to be, pretty pleased with apex legends the even the microtransactions are pretty friendly everything is kind of like again like overwatch you get um little uh just little loot crates when you level up and you open them and you get like skins and stuff like that the only thing is it can it launched with eight legends eight of the characters and, and it's so obvious dude like what they've the foundation they set here with how they plan on building on it, adding legends like Overwatch adds heroes and stuff like that and being able to counter different ones and things like that. But you you only get six of the characters, the legends, and you have to buy the other two. Now, there's three currencies. There's a currency that you pay real money for. There's a currency that you get for leveling up, I think. And then there's like a crafting material you get also in the game. But you can play the game and level up and be able to purchase these other two characters, which I am happy about, but I've played probably, I don't know how many hours. I, I think when I looked at it the other day, it said I had played 18 hours. I was like, how that can't be possible that I've, I have not played that game that much in a week, but I only have like 1800 of whatever that middle currency is. And it costs quite a bit more than that to get these other characters. So I am happy to see that you can earn those characters in game but of course, if you want them day one, you go spend real money. So that's the only part of the microtransaction that kind of teeters a little bit with annoying. Um, but that's again, it's free to play. You can't, you know, I mean, you are you are getting access quicker than others if you spend real money to a hero with different new abilities, if you will. Um, but you know, it's one of those things. It's like it's hard to build a 
you know, a, a point when you always fall back on the fact that it's free to play, right? It's not like you play paid money to, to pay, play the game. So, but like you said, that does make it extremely accessible for a lot of people. So again, I'm interested to see how it pans out over the next few weeks. People seem really hyped about it right now. I'm enjoying it myself, but it's the classic test of time, right? Over the next month or two, um, just to see what, uh, how much we're enjoying it still. They did lay out like a, a full year of content plans too. The uh, classic battle pass will be in March and then they've got new content lined out for each season. So it's all thought out. They've definitely got plans for the game, but again, it'll just be interesting to see what happens over the coming weeks. So I, when you play it, let me know, download it on Xbox. Yeah. Now that's another thing I was going to say too, is, um, I forget, was it burning, uh, one of our ambassadors or clan leaders, he uh, sent us an article that said they aren't planning as of right now to do cross progression or cross save, um, but they are planning to do cross play. So I don't know why I always cross play is cool. I don't, I get it. Like it makes sense to have cross play. I don't know why cross progression or cross save always sounds better to me because I like to. I, I don't hop. understand why you would have one without the other. Right. That's, yeah. I don't, and I don't so get that. But I get people's like, point about cross play it's like more people i guess won't have multiple platforms so now i can play with you if you're on xbox and you don't have any other platform i totally get that but for my the way i play i do have multiple platforms and i like to be able to i mean fortnite has done it best you know they kind of set it set it the way i hope a lot of games will do it in, in development companies in the future, but I can jump on PC if I want to, and there's my progression, right? And I can jump on console or whatever. Whereas cross-play, it's like I'm stuck on PS4 or wherever I decide my main is. Even Switch, dude, we've talked about Switch a lot. It would That's where it comes in too. I think about like hopping over on PC, but it'd be awesome to be able to hop over on my Switch, right? When I'm sitting in bed and play a quick game of uh, um, Apex. So I don't know. I guess that's why cross save or cross progression is always a little bit more appealing to me yeah anyways man i didn't mean to spend that much time on apex legends check it out guys it's free to play it's fun i think I, i've been having fun playing my single player games dude of course i'm always playing destiny i'm always just trying to figure out what i'm gonna play alongside destiny and now i have like a weird dynamic where i've i've been playing spider-man and it's been fantastic and then they go launch this like randomly on a Monday and it's like, okay, you threw a kink in my single player activity at the moment. <laughs> yeah. That's not good for me, dog. You need to let right? me know when your games are coming out. I can right? plan things out in advance. <laughs> exactly. I don't have that much time. Like, we got I'm seasons that drop at different one times. single player games so that I can be ready for Metro Exodus this yep. Friday. Like, <laughs> nah, you can't, like, it's all, you're not going to get the, my patronage that way. At what point, do you remember back like when we were kids maybe, man, or I don't know how long ago it would have been, but like it was like one or two games that were coming out and that's what you played. And now you have to strategize like what you're going to buy it, and it all boils down to time, right? Like the amount of time you have to play uh, any given week and it's it's like, okay, dude, especially when you're trying to balance a game like Destiny with all of it, right? And it's it's like so many games i mean we talk about it i still have games on my shelf with rappers dude on them you just said you had titanfall it's like man i don't even know when or how you play all of these awesome games it's just yeah there's a lot more competition it. it's crazy dude it's like i'm i'm trying to figure out what i'm gonna play after spider-man i got red dead god of war and tomb raider all that i've gotten in the last few months not even talking about the ones that are already on my shelf so I don't know. And then they go drop a game like this, free to play, on a Monday. What are they thinking? Yep. Sorry. What are they thinking? <laughs> well, I think it's time for some Derp Fam discourse. You ready? I guess, yeah. I'll I'll stop talking about Apex Legends. All right. Let's talk about <laughs> Destiny again. Uh, we got an email from Shadow Eyes with a Z yes. titled Armor RNG. He writes, Derp Fam, what up? So I've been thinking about this for quite some time on how to get that perfect armor roll for your playstyle or PvP slash PvE. Instead of the unforgiving RNG for armor perks, why doesn't Bungie put in place a pay for your loadout? Meaning, I want this helmet with energy reloader and scout rifle dexterity 
So then I would go to my collections, find the helmet, and spend so much glimmer or legendary shards or planetary material until I got the role I wanted. Granted, it's still RNG, but it's better than farming this planet for hours and getting absolutely no helmet. Just other gear I don't need after turning in hundreds of planetary materials, because basically I love full, full armor sets, but that's just me. Love the podcast, Derp Ascendants Repping, PSN Shadow Eyes with a Z. Very nice. What do you think about that? Dude, you know, we kind of, we talked about armor for a little bit. I guess it was the episode before last and the perks and the enhancement perks and stuff like that. I think this could be cool. I mean, you remember way back when they announced the collections and it was kind of surprising um, that it would only be, I mean, obviously we talked about all this, you know, for them to be able to keep track of the, even the role that you got and that's the one you could buy back from your collections or random roles like the idea of it is fantastic i think it would be cool to be able to buy the armor from your collections there's just a lot of stuff you have to consider right like will it break the game if you can just sit there in your menu like we used to do at the gunsmith back in d1 at the tower and and re-roll our weapon and stuff like that if you can just buy the armor um, i think ultimately the better solution is give us reasons to go do multiple things to get the armor rolls we want. Um, obviously playing the game to get that stuff, you know, probably from their perspective makes more sense. And, you know, probably even ours than just to buy it from your collections. But I'm not saying though, that that idea doesn't sound fantastic. I mean, if it was done a specific way, maybe you could, maybe it gets more and more expensive. I don't know. Um, I mean, as it is right now, I still, I said this when we talked about it a couple of weeks ago, I still haven't masterworked um, any armor, um, I think, since the random rolls have come back around. And I think my last masterwork was the Solstice stuff we did. So, you know, I don't have the perks that I want. At some point, I probably should just masterwork it. Some of that's a little bit with the economy on the cores and stuff like that. But I don't know, dude. I mean, it's, it's a neat idea. I just, you know, as far as gameplay and mechanics and functionality, I don't know. You always got to consider if it'll be good for the game overall. I mean, what do you think? It's it's tough because we're talking about re-rolling stuff. Basically, and yeah. I think taking us back into random roll territory was one risk, but how they implemented it was important um, because if you just have a reroll mechanic on stuff. It doesn't incentivize you to play activities play. that give you certain rewards. Yeah. And so then you lose the drive to actually play the content of the game. Instead, you it just becomes a, a grind mechanic, right? Like, what's the path of least resistance to get me the materials so that I can just reroll this and have it perfect? Mm -hmm. And then what do you want it perfect for? What, why do you want that perfect set? So you can go and play the way that you want to play and play the content. So is there a perfect way to do this? I don't know. Um, you know, I hear both sides of the aisle here. Like I get the mass amount of variables and armors makes it hard to get a set that is ideal. Um, I think a compromise would be, possibly be a maybe some slots or the ability to re-roll um one stat on a piece of yeah, armor which i or, think is what you could do in the division right they let you re-roll one I stat know. i think so on your um, weapon just some kind of compromise i think or middle ground might still be there that would uh you know say maybe you you grind and you get that one helmet that's got every perk you want but it doesn't have you know the right gun reload perk or it's not enhanced or whatever. Right. I'd, I'd like more, you know, modifications and more things that you can swap in and out and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mods are great, but mods just enhance stuff. You know, I want things to be more modular in the game where I can put some more pieces together to make things ideal especially in armor, you know, a gun is a gun and a gun has like a number of variables, but you get a lot of guns and it's a lot easier. I feel to get a perfect role in a gun that you want than to get a set 
of armor set up just the way you want for your play style. So I right. do think that yeah. there needs to be a solution. I just, I don't think that just endless reroll on armor is going to get what you want. Yeah, there would have to be some sort of mechanic. I mean, it makes sense, you know, uh, to use the collections for that. There would just, there would definitely have to be some sort of mechanic where it gets, you know, way more expensive as you do it. I don't know if that resets at a certain point, but yeah, just to be able to go to your collections and do it over and over and over and over again is the classic, like we've both said. Like, then you're just, you know, you're not playing the game but at the same time i mean you had you did have another really good point the whole reason you're doing it is so you can maximize being able to play those activities right so i think the the core problem here is we're just not able to get the gear that we want i guess you know more i don't I don't know it's not like we want it raining down on us but it's it's the classic enhanced stuff we talked about there's only two places you can get enhanced perks you know that's that's an issue with reward and activity not um you know not being able to get the ultimately get the gear you want we just can only go two places to get it so that's where this idea that shadow eyes has is pretty appealing because it would be nice to have an exact set for example playing pve i have a pretty solid build for my 650 titan in pve but then when i jump over to pvp i've kept tons of armor but none of it is exactly what i want and i'm i I mean i'm playing the game week in and week out and i still don't have that exact set right i wouldn't even say i have my exact set for pve um so it it does seem like there's something there that that needs to be tweaked right uh to be able to get this stuff or chase it or more specifically chase for example again enhanced perks or something of that nature so yeah. it can always Anyways. be improved right yeah. well thanks for the email shadow eyes yeah if uh, if you would like to submit some derp fam discourse you can email us at destiny reset podcast at gmail.com or send us a speak pipe which is like a voicemail speakpipe.com slash destiny reset and we'd love to hear your submissions of commentary on parts of the game, uh, feedback on something we talk about on the show, or just a shout out for someone that's done something cool in the community that you'd like to put the spotlight on. There you have it. There you go. Thank you. Now's the time of the show where we give shout out to our patrons. Do we have any new patrons this week? We do. Big shout out to Silent J T X. Maybe for Texas, but I don't know. I want to Is there this other one too above that? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, it's bolded and everything. I'm thinking it's a heading. All right. Another big shout out for Discreet Mayhem. Awesome. Thank you, Guardians, yes, for becoming patrons. If you don't know what a patron is, go to patreon.com slash destiny reset, where for as little as a dollar a month, you can support the production budget of our show. You get a couple perks for this awesome achievement you get a shout out on the podcast you get your gamer tag posted on our website and an invitation to a discord channel just for dirt fan patrons and supporters so thanks again for being <laughs> I, was, <a> patron. <laughs> I was trying for the the actual full-blown pause there sorry you did it don't mean to throw you off i didn't get kicked out of the discord channel buddy that's good i was worried for a second <laughs> um that's it we're going to wrap it up. Thanks for tuning That's everything. in. Where can people find you? You guys can find me on Twitter and YouTube primarily at Arrow Knight with a zero. What about you, man? Good. You can find me at Cyborg Sasquatch on Twitter and Mixer. And then you can find us at Destiny Reset on Twitter or on the web at www.destinyresetpodcast.com. That's your source for all things DRP, including links to subscribe on your favorite podcast app of choice. Also, if you want to join our awesome community called the Derp Fam, you can come to our Discord chat server. It serves both a text and voice chat server. Discord.gg slash Destiny Reset. Anyone can come on and join as long as you want to have fun, play nice, and talk Destiny and everything else. Come on by, introduce yourself, and Do become it, Guardians. part of one of the most welcoming communities in Destiny. You know it, the Derp Fam is amazing they are if you're listening on apple Podcasts, thank you for your reviews 
We appreciate those. If you haven't dropped one yet and you're listening on Apple Podcasts, please do. It helps us get seen and heard by more listeners just like you. Yes. Thank you, Guardian, so much for leaving those and for any feedback. We appreciate it. Yeah. Um, dude, it's uh, it's under an hour and a half. What's What's wrong with us? Hold and on. we sound awake. <laughs> what's the weather like outside? Oh, dude. Is there pigs in the... F- Flying in the stratosphere. <laughs> oh, I think maybe it's time to go to bed, dude. We're, we're going to try and get this thing edited and out, and I might try to squeeze in some more Spider-Man. Are you um, sure it's not going to be Apex Legends? Well, that is that no is the question. Why do you do this to me? I, I, I'd i forgotten about it for a moment, Cyborg. <laughs> All I was thinking about was Spider-Man. I doubt it. And you had to do this. You All had right, to but do Spider-Man, it. You, though. You, hey, and you didn't even cool mention, guy. but... You're trying to you're trying to finish Red Dead. You gonna play some of that tonight? I can't. No, it can't even happen. No, you can't dive into a game Priorities. like that at one in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we got to be careful. We're gonna get into another reset here. All right, guys. Until next reset, have fun playing Destiny Two, and take care, Guardians. <laughs>